that is for you, this unit. Yeah, you're not in vectors. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our parabolas and going through. So we've, I, I really wanted to stress with you the focus and the value of p, the distance from the vertex to the focus, because I wanted you to understand, not memorize the formulas. Well, now we are going to duplicate the focus and bring up some foci. All right. So I'd like you guys to go ahead and plot. I'd like you guys to go and plot these three figures, which we call ellipses. Now, ellipses, um, if you want to think of them in a general kind of format, they're obviously are you know, like an oval or a circle that has been stretched either way. You can also think of them in terms of their focuses um, of our parabolas that kind of face each other, because we are going to be bringing up focuses or foci in this instance um, for these types of problems. But there's going to be three types of ellipses that we're going to be talking about. All right, ellipses that are elongated on the horizontal axis, ellipses that are elongated on the vertical axis, and ellipses that are not elongated on either axis, therefore form a perfect um, circle. All right? So um, on, a, on an ellipse, there's a couple, a couple things that we have. Um, we have a major and a minor axis. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and label each one of these. And you guys are going to have to be helpful with me because um, I'm going to have a lot of information I'm going to be posting here. So it might start getting a little confusing on what is what. So just let me know because we're going to be filling in these ovals. All right. So the major axis, if you can think of the major axis, that's pretty much the longer of the two axes, right? You have, an, you know, you have a horizontal and a vertical. And the longer is called the major. Now, obviously, we're not talking about a major and a minor for a circle because these have to be exactly the same length, right? Does that make sense? Yes? Yes, OK. So obviously, if you have a major, then we also have a minor, just like the music world, right? Majors and minors, such and such. Interesting. Interesting how that stuff comes together. All right. So you have a major and a minor axis. All right. And it's going to be very important because I am going to give you information and say, hey, here's the length of the major axis, or here's the length of the minor axis. So you need to understand how do those compare to each other. And the major axis is the most important because all the information, not all the information, but a lot of the most important information lies on the major axis. Now, I'm only going to label one of them. But notice that they both are the same. So what lies on the major axis is the vertices. I'll actually label it both here. So when I'm talking about the vertices, I'm talking about the points that are at the ends of the major axis. All right? So. Um, a lot of times I'll give you information. I'll say, hey, here's the two vertices of this uh, ellipse. So you need to know, oh, those are at the two ends of the major axis. All right? And the major axis is very important because if you guys remember, for parabolas, I said, as long as you guys can remember that p is the distance from the vertex to the focus. Uh, I'm sorry, the vertex to the focus, right? We're going to have a little bit more, a little bit longer thing that I want you to remember here. But what I want you guys to understand is the, on the major axis, the vertices, the foci, and the vertex all lie in there. So the next thing is what we're going to call our foci. And each of these parabolas are going to have two foci that lie on the major axis. And it's F-O-C-I. So right now, nothing has really happened on the minor axis, but I'll talk about it. We'll go over it, because there will be some information that we're going to take from the minor axis. But for right now, if you guys can just take out of this lecture and what we're going over, that, that the major axis contains the vertices, the foci, and the vertex. Do you guys see that? They all line the axis. 
So if you know one, you know the other ones are just going left to right. And obviously I, I kind of took for granted. You guys know that the vertex hopefully will be in the center, right? Okay. So the vertex is right in the center, then you have your foci on the major axis and your vertices on the major axis. So um, for the parabola, the distance from the vertex to the focus was our value p, which I said that's the most important. If you guys can understand that, you'll know left to right, up or down, and so forth. Well, we have some different distances for our, our vertices and foci. The distance from the vertex to the vertices, we're going to call a. The distance from the vertex to the foci, we call c. And then there's two other points that I didn't talk about. Watch, I'm just going to plot both of them. But if here's your vertices, these are like your, what we call our co-vertices. They're like important, but not as important as the vertices. Kind of, they're like co, co-workers, co. They're a part of them, but they're not going to be as, as importantly used. However, when we do reference them, there's two of them. I'm only going to reference one. Um, but when we reference them, we're going to say co-vertices. And that means, oh, they're not on the major axis. Those are on the minor axis, right? And what's important, though, and how we're going to use them is the distance from the vertex to the co-vertice is b. The distance from the vertex to the co-vertices is b, all right? Now, if the distance from one vertex to a vertice is a, I want you guys to understand that then the major axis has a length of Juliana 2a. And the minor axis is now going to have a length of 2b. All right? So make sure you guys kind of understand that um, with there. And I'll, uh, I'll do this one as well. So it doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen, if it's uh, vertical or if it's horizontal. What am I doing? Got to say. It doesn't matter if it's vertical or horizontal. The information is all the same. The only difference that we have is that the major axis is vertical if it's elongated vertically, and it's horizontal if it's the other way, right? But the major, minor axis and stuff, that just all goes together with it. Um, now, obviously, on a circle, is there really a difference between A and B? No, there's no difference, right? It's the same length. So what do we call the distance from the vertex to any point on a circle? Jamie, starts with an R. Thank you, Jamie. You have a very deep voice, but I hope you're good better, OK? Yeah, let's we'll call that R. All right? And so a circle, you know, we include within the ellipse because it, it, it kind of comes around the same point. But, and we'll talk more about how the circle comes apart um, as far as where the focus is. Like what happens with the focus for a circle? Um, but you guys can see that the vertices, co-vertices, they're all the same. They're all points that are equal distance from the center. So does everybody kind of see, kind of have an idea with this? A little bit. Yes. Are they different? Yes. The vertices lie on the major axis, which is the longer axis. The co-vertices lie on the minor axis, which is the shorter axis. And unless we're talking about a circle, you are going to have a longer axis and a shorter axis. Okay? Always, unless we talk about a circle. Yes, Mackenzie? Oh, you don't have a question anymore? Yes, Justin. What is the edge of the circle called? Like from where your vertex is to the edge of the It's just a point. I mean, a circle is a set of points. So it's just a set of infinite many points. All right? So we're good with this. All right, so now Aaron. Um, we're going to talk about in geometry class, Aaron. What a lot of you guys, uh, what a lot of you guys came up with in geometry is you guys learned the definition of a circle, which was x squared. I'm sorry. Well, you probably learned this. X squared plus y squared equals r squared. That was the definition of a circle per your geometry class. Now we've obviously been talking a lot about h and k, where that represents our vertex, and that's going to be the same case with what we're going to be doing with the circle where now we're just going to say it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. All right? 
So whatever your number at the end, what, your, what that equals, you know, let's say it's 16, then you could say, oh, well, my radius then is 4. All right? Um, but now our vertices are a little bit different. OK? Yes, Maggie May. Are we going to need a formula sheet for these? No. No. You only have the formula sheets for those two sections that I gave you. OK. Well, let's take a look at this, Mackenzie. Do you remember this at all? Do you remember being presented with it? No. No? OK. Well, so the main important thing, you're definitely going to want to know the definition of a circle. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, all right? And think about it the other way. You guys know in a parabola, you only had one squared, right? It was either the x squared or the y squared. When I try to like conceptually think about this, think of this ellipse, Chris, as multiple parabolas, right? You could have, you're having parabolas facing left and right and parabolas facing up or down. So now we're doing the x minus h squared and the y minus k. They're both going to be squared. So there's two different formulas, though, and I want to see if you guys can come up with the distinction of why they are different. So as providing you guys with the formulas, you have the two formulas for the parabola that we've already talked about. And now here is the two formulas for the ellipses. And obviously, we'll, we're kind of done talking about the circle for a second. So what I'd like to kind of see is, can you guys see a relationship compared to the difference of those two formulas? Actually, let's just try to go through the quick observation. So Josh, what is the difference between those two formulas that I just wrote on the board? What is the only difference you see? OK. So what is being divided over here? So the x is being divided by the what? B. And the y is being divided by the a, right? Now the value of b represents what? To the covertice. And a represents the distance from the vertex to the major, right? Now the only difference then over here is now the x is being divided by the distance of the major axis, right, squared, or distance of a vertex to a, a vertice. And this is being divided by b. So Caroline, what kind of conclusion then can you come up with that? What does that mean? Is it important at all? This one is really long left and right. This one's really long up and down. This one is being divided by, your x is being divided by the a. This one, your x is being divided by the b. Why would that matter? Does it change anything, or what are you thinking? All right, Michelle, you have any idea? Interesting, interesting. Maggie, were you going to add anything else to that, or is that a good definition? Yeah. Well, if you guys could think about it, um, A is the longer of the two distances, right? A is longer than B, right? Would everybody agree with that? A is longer than B. A represents the distance from the center to a vertice. Vertices is longer than the covertices. So, when my, dis when my larger distance is being is divided um, or is being and dividing into my x variable, that produces a that produces a ellipse that is elongated horizontally. But when I have it, the b is under the x. Well, then that's shorter, and the a under the y that elongates the y coordinate. Does that kind of make a little bit of sense? So you could say, oh, okay. So therefore, it just brings up this general case, guys. Um, if I give you an equation, x squared over 9 plus y squared over 3 equals 1. Is that going to be elongated horizontally or vertically? Horizontally. horizontally, right? Because the larger your a, your a squared, the larger number is under your x. So you know it's going to be elongated horizontally. Does that make sense? Yes? Yes? OK. So. 
And that's a very quick tip when you guys are looking at equations. And I give you an equation like that. That's what you need to be able to look at. What formula am I using? Where is my A under, Aaron? Where is it? And once you can determine where your A is under, you can determine which formula you're going to per use. So then I bring up this question. Is this elongated horizontally or vertically? It's a circle, right? Does that kind of make sense? Oh, it's not elongated one way or the other. They're exactly the same. Right? So therefore, it has to produce a circle. Right? Or you can even say, you know, 5, 5. Oh, OK, that's the same. Then multiply by 5, and you get 45 square root and so forth. Yes? Yes. From the vertex, you'd have to go out 3, yes. All right, so there's two other things that I want to talk about. Um, Two other things I want to get through that you guys are going to need information. And this is one of the big equations that, yes, you do need to know that will not be provided for you. So Chris, when you're ready to write this down, let me know. Ready. Ready, OK. So the equation is, all right, so we have A, B, and C, but how is A, B, and C related to each other? Now, unfortunately, when we did our A, B, and C and did a relation, we can actually relate to them by the Pythagorean theorem. OK? Unfortunately, though, the relationship is not the Pythagorean theorem because it's not the same a, b's, and c's. But we can use triangles to show it. And I don't really want to show it right now um, because it does take a little while. And in reality, you guys really just need to know that um, c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. That is how they relate to each other. All right. So yes, you're like, well, wh what happened to a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Yes, that's true when you have a triangle and a and b are your legs and c is your hypotenuse. I can show you the exact same kind of thing, how this works. But this is going to be the relationship of our a, b, and c of, a, of an ellipse. And we're even going to do another one that's going to be hyperbola. That's going to be even different. But that's the relationship of a, b, and c. And we're going to be using that information to help us solve a problem. All right? So. The last thing is what we call the eccentricity. And the eccentricity, you guys will be asked, is simply just the ratio of c over a. Now remember, c represents the distance from the, um, the vertex to the foci. And uh, a represents the distance from the um, vertices to the, or the vertex to the vertices. And so when you guys have a ratio that is 1, meaning it's the exact same distance, you guys have a perfect circle. When you have something that's farther away from that, then you're going to get into ellipses. So the trick Logan? Yes. Hello? Yes. I need Allison Montoya for checkout, please. OK. Yeah. Allison, just make sure you have the homework. Allison? Make sure you have the homework down, and then I'll have this uploaded for you later. Yes? No, no, no. C is not always half of A. No, 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 not at all. Um, so you have to be very careful with that. But eccentricity is going to help us determine the shape of graph. Is it going to be more like a circle or less like a circle? And that's going to be all based on that ratio. All right? Now, is everybody any other further questions on this? Because I'm going to get into some examples that I want to help you guys out. But does everybody feel like they have? at least a rough idea, and then we'll actually get into some work. So I'll turn this off so Allison now can